Hey guys, Mechanic CG here, and welcome back to another episode of Gran Turismo 5. Today is episode number 23. Hopefully you guys do enjoy. Right, we are here at the Fuji Speedway. Let's do this. We have 14.18 miles to drive. Uh, this should go a little bit quicker because we can take the corners at a higher top speed. Here we go, though. Go, 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 go. Oh, no. That's better. We got an R32 in front as well. Messed up through there. Overtaking the Subaru though and the NSX. How come we are the only uh, R35 GTR here? We are literally the only R35. We're looking very good here, yeah, speed-wise. Oh, off the track, off the track, off the track, off the track. Not good. And we are going through the very tight corner as well. Perfect. Right, let's see how much speed this GTR actually has. This is where we're going to get extra time compared to the other cars. Let's see if we can hit 180, 179. Perfect. Nice, 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 nice. Awesome. No need to shift up through that corner there. Right, let's try and stay on the track for this one, please. Nope. At least we got back on the track earlier. That is the tightest corner in any track in this game. No track has a tighter corner than that. Come on, come on. Nice. Oh, perfect. Up into fifth. I have a feeling we're not going to hit our... Yeah, we're not going to hit 180 at all. Awesome. Oh, that is perfect. That is speed through that section there. And for this lap, we stayed on the track as well. I 
I sort of wish I actually had the G29 racing wheel for this. Because obviously that G29 is PS3 and PS4 compatible. But I don't have a PS4. Which is a shame. to the fourth lap now. I, try, I tried to get 180. I was really trying to get that 180 speed. It wasn't happening. It's not happening. The car is like, no, I don't want to be hitting 180 today. No, thank you. I didn't realise there was a whole button. Actually though, why is there a horn button in this game? That does not make sense. Probably for multiplayer. But that would literally be the only reason you would have a horn in a game like this. Perfect. We're looking very good through these corners here. Come on, come on. Round you go. Nice. Perfect. Right, we are coming on to the final lap now. Yeah, we ain't hitting that. That's it. Ah, oh, gutted. Couldn't get 180. Yeah, you've let me down. Here we go. Perfect. The speed that we're carrying through here is unreal. Perfect. Right, coming through that section for the final time. That is so tight, those corners. Let's get around here. Nice. Perfect. And coming up to the finish line. And across the line. 160 miles an hour at the finish though. Nine minutes and one second. Perfect. On to the next one. Right, so for this race, we are now at the Grand Valley Speedway. This is one of the more trickier tracks. Um, it's a very good original Gran Turismo track, but it is a lot more trickier than some of the other tracks in this game. Oh. So this is going to be a really fun challenge. It's a try not to crash challenge. 
set that as the title of the video. Mechanic CG plays the try not to crash challenge. Perfect. actually doing really well on this track surprisingly. I'm not very good with this track because of the fact that it is a tricky track but I think we're doing okay. Perfect. Look at that. The one thing I love about this game as well that they absolutely nailed, um, and for a game from 2010 to have this, I mean the 2007 uh, GT5 Prologue also had this, but the reflections on the bodywork of the car looks absolutely amazing. It looks so good. Right, on to a lap number two now. Perfect. Surprisingly, this track, even though it looks very sort of square cornery and all that, it, that's that's a new term in the dictionary. Don't at me. <laughs> um, but even though the corners look very square, um, the track flows really well between. Come on, come on, make it round. Perfect. Try not to lose control like we did before. That corner is such a death trap though. Because obviously the number one rule of racing. Um, alongside don't crash into other races just because you're toxic. That's a big rule. But another number one rule is never break on a corner. You always break while you're going in a straight line. And then once your car is brought down to enough speed that it's safe to break around the corner, you can then start turning. But you always break on the straightest sections of track. And that's why that corner there, to slow down quick enough for that corner, uh, for that hairpin corner on that corner there. I've said corner way too many times, I need to stop. <laughs> uh, but to slow down for that hairpin turn, 
you have to start braking on the slight corner beforehand. And to get round it then, it's just a nightmare. That's why um, in one of the previous episodes with the Lamborghini challenge on this track, the two lap battle with the Lamborghini Gallardo, I had so many problems where I kept crashing into that corner just because I couldn't control the car. It was so uncontrollable through that section. That was brilliant. I think that's the best I've actually taken that corner before. I don't think I've taken it any better than that. Right, on to the final lap now. This is going to be epic. Right, careful. Very good. We've nailed that um, braking zone now. Slow down, slow down. Perfect. Right, coming up to the final S section. Actually, no, there's like three in there on this track. I don't think we're going to get a fastest lap on this lap. Um, and there isn't any more laps, so uh, that is it for fastest lap attempts. Perfect. Right, coming up to the finish line now. Very good, very good, very good, very nice. And across the line, is that the handbrake? Yes. 
had to finish in style. <laughs> the AI car can't handle that. <laughs> that was pretty funny. 10 minutes and 15 seconds for the entire race. Very nice. Right, we are now here at Monza. We are going to be doing 18 miles in total. That is a long race. So let's let's just get straight into it. Again, the GTR doing us proud. Let's go. Squeeze through these cars here. I have a feeling we're not going to get 180 miles an hour again on this track. Just because the main straight is quite short. Nice. I still don't get why Monza is shaped like a shoe. It's a very weird track. Nice. That corner is always taken in second gear. And so is this next one. Always seems to be taken in second gear. And slowing down four. I don't even know what this corner is called. It's like a weird chicane. It's like a double chicane. Really weird. That was very good there. And now we can accelerate on the exit. Perfect. One seven four we managed to hit. If it wasn't a sharper corner, we probably could have hit one eighty. And if it didn't have the chicane at all, as much of a boring track it would then be, I think we could hit 180 easy. Perfect. This is a long track though, but because there's so many straights and so many fast sections on this track, and the fact is every single corner, the sections aren't taken at 80 miles an hour like um, Sakuba was, um, the entire sections are taken at 140 with sharp braking zones. And then it's just acceleration straight after the braking zone. So you can get these laps completed much quicker. Nice. Perfect. Very good on time here. I think my target is going to be below 1 minute 55 then. Let's see if we can beat that. Perfect. I obviously love playing racing games, but it's not my profession, if 
if that makes sense. It's not the thing that I'm very good at. To be fair, none of them are. I'm sort of like an all-round just play games for fun. But the one that interests me more and that I get the most enjoyment out of is racing games. Um, I wish I was as good as all these people. Like, there are a bunch of YouTubers out there who are amazing at racing games. So you've got people like... Um, I've been watching Rhino GT lately, I think his name is. Um, it's like Ryan with an O at the end of it. He is absolutely amazing. He's done a walkthrough on every single Gran Turismo game, I think except the GT4 and GT5 prologue. Uh, but he's done 100% walkthrough, so he's completed everything to do with it. And it is awesome just seeing like the amount of stuff that he's done with it. Um, and then there's a couple of other channels I've seen. So, uh, Jimmy Broadbent. Oh my gosh, he is amazing when it comes to, like, sim racing and stuff like that. Um, and he messes around, has a lot of fun. Um, and he's pretty good. Um, 156, so we didn't quite beat our time there. Um, I'm still looking to beat that, though. Oh. Went very wide through there. Oh, I'm getting notifications. Ah, it's going crazy. Um, but as well as uh, Jimmy Broadbent being, like, one... One of, um, sort of like the entertaining factor of the sim racing. Experience wise, there's this kid um, called Sam, uh, who's actually been in one of Jimmy's videos before. He is absolutely amazing at um, sim racing. So he's, um, there was a, I think for GT Sport, there's a DLC. Um, where you try and beat Lewis Hamilton's times. And obviously Lewis Hamilton, Sam, recorded those with a steering wheel. So people with controller, already that's pretty impressive if you can beat that. But this kid is nine years old and he's beaten Lewis Hamilton's times like that. And it's insane seeing him, someone that young, being able to beat uh, <laughs> Lewis Hamilton's times. It's just awesome. It is what, he is one of the coolest uh, sim racers out there, easily. Ah, uh, come on, can we get the sub 155? Not quite. 155.952. Right, this is our final lap then to try and get that. I'm going to break a little bit later. That was much better. Nicely done. Perfect. We went sideways, so it was pretty cool. Nice. This tree section as well. Gran Turismo just gets like the tree canopies perfect. Perfect. 
perfect. And we are coming up to the finish line. Can we get that below 155? Yes, just, just below 155. Very nice. I will take that time. I will take that. Uh, 9.46 overall. That is very, very good. Very good, very nice. Right, so we are now here on my third favorite track, I'd probably say. Um, and it is the Suzuka Circuit. The mix of the long straights, the chicanes, and the s vents. I mean, sort of like COVID on this first half of the track is absolutely amazing. I had to sneeze there. <laughs> Here we go. This section, though, is just perfect. And it tests sort of like... You need the perfect gear ratio to get through this part quickly. So this car is very close between second and third gear. So it's not ideal. Um, so obviously, taking those corners, we're going to be sticking to third even though it says second. Perfect. Oh, going off road a little bit there. This race is going to be a little bit longer because it's the same length as the last one, but there isn't as many fast straights, so this is going to take a lot longer. Also, I'm not looking forward to the endurance series. I've seen those in the endurance series, and I don't think I'm actually going to be able to complete that because I don't think I'll be able to sit 24 hours for a race. As much as I want to, I don't think I can. Perfect. And across the line onto a lap number two. Lap numero dos. I forgot to shift. Paying attention too much to my uh, second languages, which are very crap. Like, I can guarantee you, mentioning that uh, Lewis Hamilton DLC from the last clip, uh, I can guarantee you if I tried doing those DLCs, um, I would not be able to finish. I could maybe, after sitting down for a couple of hours, get the goal. Not a chance of my beating his times. Not with one without a wheel, which I'd have to buy a PlayStation, buy a wheel, buy all that. Besides the point. Um, but I'd also have to buy everything else as well. <laughs> like, to be fair, Gran Turismo Sport, I had a look. 16 quid. That's it. On the PlayStation Store. Like, not gonna lie, if a game costs that much, isn't it slightly worrying how much content there is inside the game then? Is it just like a Gran Turismo prologue at that point? 
like GT5 prologue where they just had a couple of games, a couple of races, a couple of... That's what I'd be worried about getting Gran Turismo Sport. I know Gran Turismo 7, which is probably going to come out on the PS5 maybe 2022. That's going to be an amazing game. It's going to be one of the best games out there. But until Gran Turismo 7 gets announced, like, I hope they call it Gran Turismo 7, but until that gets announced, I won't be thinking of getting a PS5. Um, because of the fact that the Series X is back, completely backwards compatible, I want to stick with that. Um, because then I can play all my Xbox One games on a Series X. Whereas, um, if I was playing, um, I don't know, if it wasn't backwards compatible, I would move to PS5 easily, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, but there is, there is no motivation to move to PlayStation when PlayStation, when Xbox announces backwards compatibility, it just wins. Right, slow it down for here. Yeah, this is definitely a long race. I'm so glad I've split this into two episodes as well, because this will be like a one hour episode. It would be way too long way, way too long. Oh, slow down. Second gear through the chicane. Tap of the brake through there. I don't know why. I don't know whether it's just me. But whenever I go through corners in a racetrack, I'll lean into them. Like, in real life. My body will lean into the corners. So if I turn left, I'll lean slightly to the left. Lean slightly to the right. And I don't know why... Like, I'll even tilt my head round to move round the corner. And it's something I just have done for ages. But I don't know whether anyone else does it. Does anyone else do it? It's almost like second nature. I just keep, keep doing it. It's like, oh yeah, if I move my head, I'll see more around the car from the camera angle, but it doesn't work like that. It's a flat image. Like, if it was VR, that makes sense, but it's not VR. It's a flat image. It's as flat as it gets. Yeah, I forgot this car's four-wheel drive, innit? I love four-wheel drive cars. They make life so much easier in racing games. Every car should be four-wheel drive. Like, I don't think a single car should exist as rear-wheel drive unless it's built for drifting. If it's not built for drifting, it shouldn't exist as rear-wheel drive. Though, to be fair, I think rear-wheel drive would make sense, like... Yeah, I think so. I don't know. That's like a change my mind to me, innit? All cars should have four-wheel drive change my mind. Perfect. Right, coming on to the final lap now. Suzuka. Perfect. Oh, very wide there. Uh, 
perfect. Yeah, that's not... That is the problem with um, a lot of tracks, is their corners are built just between gear ratios, and it is so awkward. Like, you could, for Suzuka, I think, shorten down the gear ratio ever so slightly, so every single corner you would take at a higher gear. So that corner would be taken in third, any corner that's taken in third, taken in fourth. And, but like the low end revs, so by the time you get out of the corner, you don't need to shift straight afterwards. I feel like that would work. But obviously, we're a bit far into this championship now to uh, tune the car now, so. That turbo hiss, though. Perfect. We weren't getting a new best lap. It would have been cool to see a new best lap, but we didn't. Um, but one minute, no, not one. 11 minutes and 13 seconds for that. Pretty cool. And how much money did we get overall? 27,000 for each race, which is about 150, well, 140,000, somewhere around there. But also, because it was a championship and we get the gold trophy, we also get an extra bonus of 138,000. Okay, nice. So thank you guys so much for watching. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like, comment down below and subscribe. If you want to keep up to date with all the stuff going on on the Mechanic CG channel, then be sure to go take a look in the description for links of socials and all sorts of other places. And also, we have finally got merch down there, so go check that out. And if you want to help support the channel, hit that join button. It means the world to me. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Run for your fucking life.